Hello everyone! Today we're going to be looking at a list of games similar to Stardew Valley that you can play right now. I want to be clear right away though, these games are not Stardew Valley. For one reason or another, they failed to reach that success. But that doesn't mean they're not worth playing. Some of these are still in progress, and some are better than others, but I feel that all are worth mentioning because they all share some of the same aspects we like from games like Stardew Valley and the classic Harvest Moon games. So let's get started with this mess. Starting off our list at number 1 is a game called World's Dawn, which has a very positive 81% review on Steam and costs less than 10 US dollars. This one has a typical core, building friendships, finding love, harvesting crops, tending livestock, fishing, foraging, mining, cooking and exploring. This foundation, combined with the game's bright, simple cartoony art style, makes for a surprisingly enjoyable experience. There are over 32 unique NPCs to meet, all with their own personalities, and no shortage of dialogue, which is an area other games on the list seem to fall flat on. If an NPC continually says the same thing, day in, day out, it gets very boring to visit them every day, and they feel more like a sign than an actual personality. Overall, this one is pretty simple, but that's not a bad thing because it actually makes simplicity work pretty well. The character portraits are all very well done and seem to actually add some personality to each character. The focus with this one is less on farming and more about the relationships and quests, and that means it's just a nice, simple, relaxing game. Some of the drawbacks are the controls are a little odd and some of the actions and movements feel slow and clunky, and there isn't a ton of content to immerse yourself in, so don't expect a ton of hours out of this one. Still an enjoyable game for the right price, especially considering it's actually one of the cheap ones on the list, some similar games are considerably more expensive. Now for you Harvest Moon fans out there, prepare to be disappointed. Sorry about this one. Previously, I've described this one as an end-to-end -end dumpster fire, and I still actually mostly agree with that. But, if you can get past the obnoxiously long cutscenes, top-of-the-line mobile graphics, ultra-simplistic game mechanics, $30 price tag, and fact that it's a very lazy mobile game ported to PC, you can actually get some decent hours out of this one. The one thing this game does have going for it is the amount of content it can offer, albeit somewhat repetitively. I've currently got about 20 hours sunk into this game and there's still a lot more I could do. It has a decent story you follow as you progress through the game, but it's mostly told through very long cutscenes, many of which are basically back to back. And having to sit through these while they completely over explain many things really takes you out of the immersion of the game and makes it fairly unenjoyable in my opinion. Relationships are a thing, but the NPC dialogue is very minimal and rarely changes. They're going to say the same thing basically every day, forever. There are an astounding zero skills to upgrade and work with, so you're left grinding out chores so you can upgrade your tools and then start the process all over again. The actions are painfully slow, especially at the beginning, thanks to the basic tools. But that's not the end of the world because mining and fishing are where you actually make the money. I suggest avoiding farming unless it's needed for a quest, otherwise you're just wasting time and energy that could be spent doing other things, like playing better games. You're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but one look at this game really tells you everything you need to know. So buy about 5 of the other games on this list instead of this one. But in all seriousness, this one does actually have overall positive reviews and some people really do enjoy this game. So just understand what you're getting before you buy it and don't forget you can always refund it. Number 3 on our list is a game that takes an original and unique approach to the 2D farming game genre. These games normally have a cheery, upbeat vibe to them that makes them relaxing to play, Leader Heights has a very dark tone to it. All the NPCs seem to be hiding secrets, everything feels tense and dark and the art style really represents that. This one's reasonably priced at about $10 and holds a 77% positive review rating on Steam. The whole purpose of this game is to basically uncover the town's secrets and progress the story, following its twists and turns along the way, and there will be twists and turns. The choices you make impact what happens with that story. Some of these choices have very dark consequences for some of those NPCs. From drug dealing, spousal abuse and money laundering, to cold-blooded murder, this one has something for everyone. You can even throw your chickens straight into the river. Overall, it is a fairly simple game as indicated by its items and menus. There are a large variety of skills to unlock for all manners of activities, whether it's to help you farm or to let you into people's houses after dark to see what they're actually getting up to. This is a game that really encourages exploring and seeing what you find. There are many hidden events that trigger by being in the right place at the right time. Also, your relationships with some of the NPCs have an effect on what these events that trigger. Of course, if none of that sounds like your thing, you can just hang out on your farm tending to your crops and raising your animals. The one drawback I find with Gleaner Heights is a slow pace. If you're not sure what to look for, then it can take a long time to make anything happen. Nothing seems to happen fast, so prepare to spend some time if you want to uncover things on your own. 
But if you think you might enjoy this one and can handle the darkness, the price is right and you can get some decent hours out of this one. Number 4 on what's potentially the worst list ever made is a game you may have seen me play recently. It's called Fantasy Farming Orange Season. But I just call it Orange Season because that's a mouthful and I don't have time to say the whole thing. This one actually has a 100% positive review rate on Steam, however there aren't a ton of reviews out there. This one costs about $15 so it's actually in the middle ground as far as games like this are concerned, not the least expensive, not the most expensive. Now you can do the usual farming, fishing, mining, foraging, etc. But this one doesn't seem to offer a ton of content at this point. But to be fair, this one is still in early access and still being updated with new content. I like the art style with this one, I find it fairly appealing, and the map is fairly large and diverse, so it can be fun to just wander around and see what you find. You'll notice there's a lot of animals as you travel the map. There's actually over 30 types of animals in the game and you can even tame the wild ones and bring them back to your farm, presumably for consumption. Speaking of which, there's dozens of marriage candidates, so you won't have any shortage of choices. And interestingly, you can also influence which NPCs end up with which NPCs. I did find some of the tasks somewhat simple and repetitive. Bring this guy 20 clays, now he needs 20 iron, now it's 20 copper. It just feels a little too simple and takes away from the enjoyment of the game. Also, one thing that always tends to turn me off of games like this is a lack of skills and progression. Orange Season is lacking these, leaving a lot of it feeling a little directionless. Hopefully this is something they'll add in future updates. An overall enjoyable game that's likely to continue improving with every update. This one does get things right in the sense that I can just pick it up and play it at any time and enjoy it. It's a relaxing, it's enjoyable, it's what it needs to be. Number 5 on our list is the newest game and that is Verdant Skies. This one currently has an 84% positive rating on Steam and will cost you about $20 so it's definitely a little more expensive than most of the other games it's comparable to. The only one that's actually more expensive is that terrible Harvest Moon game. It has an interesting 2D-ish, 3D-ish art style that reminds me of Harvest Moon but it's actually executed pretty well. I hear different opinions on the art style of this game, some people like it, some people don't. I personally do enjoy it. You'll find an emphasis on this story with this one. Basically, you crash en route to a new colony on an alien world. From there you need to do what you can to ensure the success of the colony. And guess what? You're the farmer. So while it has the usual farming, fishing, mining mechanics, it has a unique approach to the story and I find that refreshing. One thing I really like is the ability to make hybrid crops. This means a lot of extra things to play with and a chance for some special crops. I always like experimenting and the more crops the better. And there seems to be a lot of things you can craft, a lot of things you can upgrade and I always enjoy that process. I always like working toward things to make myself bigger, more productive, better. So I can definitely sink a few hours into this one doing just that. Now there's already a fair bit of content and they're actively adding more so there's no shortage of things to do with a game like this and considering it's still growing we don't really know exactly how good it's going to be by the end and how much there is going to be to play with. Like I said earlier, for a lot of people with this game, it kind of just depends on the art style. If you think it's something you'll like, give it a try. Keep in mind that price tag, a little bit pricey, but you get some content for sure. By the way, all these games are very simply available on Steam. You don't have to go anywhere weird to find them, you don't have to visit their websites, you don't have to back to Kickstarter, nothing. Just search them on Steam, you can find them all. While we're at it, let's do an honorable mention onto this list, My Time at Portia. The reason I didn't include this on the list is it's not really super similar to the other games in regard to the art style, it's a 3D open world, all these other games on this list are 2D. Plus, if you're familiar with my channel, you've already seen me cover this quite a bit so you don't need to hear a lot about it again. But this game is a lot of fun, it's beautiful, it's well done, and still developing, it's only gonna get better. This one does cost about $20 but in my opinion it's well worth it because you get a lot of content for that money and it's a quality game, it's a lot of fun, there's a ton of things to do and it's absolutely beautiful. Honorable mention number two, we're going to throw it on the list because it actually releases tomorrow, Kinseed. So by the time you guys see this video you'll probably be able to play this. And that's why I didn't add it to the list because it's not technically out yet and I don't really know a lot about it, I haven't actually played it, I'll get to that tomorrow. But it looks amazing from everything that I've seen, this one's going to be really good, potentially better than any on this list and maybe even rivaling Stardew Valley itself, only one way to find out. Tomorrow's version however will be an early release and you won't be able to get it unless you had backed the game in their kickstarter. Alright, if you like this list consider hitting that like button, helps me out a great deal, lets me know I did a good job. Also if you haven't seen it already, I made another list video just like this one but about 4 upcoming amazing games, they all look absolutely phenomenal, go ahead and check that out if you want. So this was 5 games similar to Stardew Valley you can play right now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video these games are not Stardew Valley. 
but they don't have to be. Stardew Valley set the bar really, really high. It might be the best farming game of that genre ever created, so it's unfair to compare every game to that one. It did set the bar, but not every game has to compare to it. Let me know if there's any other games out there that I missed or ones you want me to cover, current, future, whatever. Other than that, hope you liked it. Thank you all for watching.